Okay, before you move to Tampa in 2024, make sure you watch this entire video. These are 10 things you need to think through before you make the move. Here we go. I'm Sam and this is the Living in Tampa channel. We make these videos for you about what it's like to live and move to Tampa. We're also a team of realtors here and we'd love a chance to earn your business. Give us a call, text, or email anytime. Way more than we love making these videos, we want a chance to work with you. So when you reach out, we'll schedule a Zoom call, hop on a call, connect, see how we can best help you, and just see how we can get you the house and the budget and the timeline that you want. So give us a call. Okay, so number one on the list, we'll start with. Obviously, we always start with number one on a list. Tampa was a top market in the country, really like top five, 10, depends on what kind of list you look at. Tampa was a very popular market in 2023. Now the question comes up is why? What happened that put it on that list? A couple things. One of the main things is property appreciated really fast. It kept going up in 2023, while in a lot of other areas, it went stagnant or it went down a little bit. It kept going up in this area, even though interest rates were super low. The thing that happened with interest rates being low is inventory was also very low. We'll get to that. But Tampa was a very popular market. So there's all kinds of factors that have made Tampa this top market. I also just think it kind of had a moment during the pandemic. It rose in popularity and we're still just kind of riding that wave. Now, prices are trending up because of that popularity, which we'll get to, but it's a very interesting time in Tampa. Okay, number two thing you need to think about before you move is insurance. So we've had some clients recently move from California. Quite a few move from California. We'll do a California versus Tampa video at some time because this is a trend. But something that they noticed is everything was cheaper except their insurance. Their insurance, their homeowner's insurance was about the same as it was in California. Now their house was quite a bit less valuable here they went from a $2 million house in Southern California to a $750,000 house here, and their insurance was the same. Now, they can see the Gulf of Mexico from their sidewalk in front of their house. They're super happy, they love it. But that really kind of shocked them. Insurance is expensive here. We have a lot of natural disasters. We have a lot of things going on like that that make insurance expensive. But there are certain things to look for that make your insurance a little bit cheaper. So like the house that I lived in previously in Tarpon Springs, half a million dollar house, insurance is 7,500 a year. New house, more valuable on an acre. Our insurance is only 1,900 a year. So the reasons that it is cheaper is mostly related to the distance it is from the water and these certain things called hurricane clips that are on the trusses that connect the trusses down into the walls that make it a more secure structure. In 1962, when that other house was built, they weren't doing stuff like that yet. Okay, number three thing to think about is bugs. If you can't handle some bugs, this is not the place for you. I have a lot of friends that will send me clips on Instagram of just the crazy Florida people and stuff and animals and insects. And it's, it can be pretty wild down here. Bugs are a big factor and not just cockroaches and mosquitoes, but you have seasons of all these kind of bugs. If bugs really bug you, not, no pun intended. I really didn't intend that pun. But if bugs really bother you, if you can't really handle it, I mean, hire an exterminator, but also just kind of prep for it. Maybe it's not the right place, or maybe you just need to prepare for that. And speaking of bugs and animals, we were sitting down having breakfast this morning, me, my wife, and two kids, and all of a sudden we realized there was a squirrel inside of our screen, like by our pool. It had ripped a hole in the screen to get to some bird feed in there. These squirrels are quite wily. It is pretty maddening to me. Okay, number four, the greater Tampa area, GTA, whether you think of Grand Theft Auto or the greater Toronto area, I like to call it the GTA. Uh, GTA, the, the greater Tampa area is big. It includes, you know, obviously St. Petersburg, Clearwater, this whole Pinellas County, and then to the north, and it's really just expanding. It's going down into Manatee County. A lot of these suburbs that service the Tampa, St. Petersburg area are just expanding out and out. This whole area is getting bigger, and on the outskirts is where most of the new development is happening. So it's gonna keep keep growing that way. There is quite a bit more space. Even up here where I am, 
a little outside of the city. There's a brand new neighborhood going in. They tore down a thousand acres of forests and they're building 3,500 homes, which I'm pretty sad about. But you see here on the drone shots, they're already torn it all down. They did all this dirt work. What's funny about here too, they tear all this down and then they burn it. And so it's just smoky for weeks, super annoying. My wife's pregnant, so she's a little more sensitive to things like that right now. But yeah, do they do they do that where you are? I know if you're in the West, they're probably not likely to burn it. But I'm just curious, curious what it's like where you live. All that to say about the Greater Tampa area getting bigger, it's going to get closer and closer to Bradenton down to the South. It's gonna get closer and closer to Lakeland to the East. And it's going to get closer and closer to these towns up to the north, which are, you know, Crystal River, Brooksville. It's, I mean, I'm not gonna say Ocala, that's quite a bit further up. Okay, number five thing about the Tampa area is there are more master plan communities coming. I just mentioned the one just to the south of me. I think that one's going to be built entirely by Lennar, but there's a lot of these other master plan communities like Angeline that I've talked about. But then, like I just mentioned down in Parrish, which is technically in Manatee County, it's like master plan community row there's like literally a main road that goes through there and there's like new communities on both sides of the road like one after the next there's quite a few areas like this there's more communities going into west of chapel avalon two rivers there's a bunch of these kind of all-inclusive master plan style communities that keep coming of course epperson and Murata made a big splash in 2020 and 2021 and that same developer is now building angeline and is building a lot of these down in parish the developer is named metro they build them with these the big crystal lagoons the fancy amenities so there's a lot of opportunity for you if you're coming down to hop into one of these developments really early you're going to get the best prices you're going to get the the best deal early even though some of the amenities are going to come quite a bit later something to think about one of the reasons i love the angeline community so much is because it's so close to the toll road when you hop on that toll road it's going to take you 30 minutes to get to the airport that toll road just kind of changes everything for this like suburban area in the middle of like North Tampa. And number six, let's continue talking about the suburbs. The suburbs are the areas that are growing. Obviously the other areas are super condensed. We have a few listings like close to downtown St. Petersburg right now. And the clientele is just not like young families. They're cool properties. I'm sure that young families like them, like to look at them, but a lot of the young families are moving out into the suburbs. So if that's something, some kind of community you wanna be around is other families, they're kind of on the outskirts. There are some areas that are a bit more central, like West Chase, Carrollwood, that have quite a few families and are a little more central, but because they're more central, the prices you know, reflect that. There's some great options there though. We love buying houses in West Chase. And that Cardinal is chirping behind me. Here we are, end of January. It's warm outside, wearing short sleeves. It's, it was chilly the last couple days, but right now it's pretty nice. The birds are loving it. And that is one of my kids chirping back at the bird over there. So, if you're wondering what the sounds are. Okay, number seven. Retirees are starting to move away from Florida. This is interesting to me because we've gotten a few listings this way. People wanting to move to Tennessee or to Texas because maybe their expenses can just get a little bit lower. With rising insurance costs being the main factor that's moving them out. When someone's on a fixed income and then suddenly their insurance requires them to carry a flood policy or their premiums just double in three years, which happens sometimes. Then they're just looking outside of the state to live their final years. That sounds kind of morbid, but this is a big factor. When people are on fixed income, once they retire, Florida used to be kind of a safe haven for that. Now Florida is a little bit more like every other state. Okay, number eight, local Floridians are, are getting priced out a little bit. So we talk to clients all the time that are moving here from other states. Very often they're moving here from more expensive states and it feels cheaper to them here. When you're moving from California, I talked to clients that are that just moved here from Australia the other day and your budget is 800,000 to a million. There's tons of options here. There's awesome options in the Tampa area if your budget is 700 to a million dollars. But when your budget is 300 or 400, there's not as many options. And a lot of the time locals have this expectation that home prices just aren't gonna go up this fast, but they have. This is a very desirable area now. We have awesome downtown in Tampa and in St. Pete. We have awesome sports teams. We have awesome beaches. We have awesome attractions. We have beautiful weather. People want to live here. Okay, number nine thing you need to think about is the housing inventory. If you're moving here and you're wanting to buy, 
there's decent options. We can always find decent options and we can find a few of them, but we can't find a ton of them because there's just not as many houses on the market. So back in 2020, they were talking about inventory low, being so low and what they, what they wanted it to be at was six months of inventory. So just t take that as like a snapshot. Look at every house that is for sale right now. If we kept selling at the same pace, sorry, there's a crane, these cranes, we say they sound like pterodactyls, but obviously we don't really know what pterodactyls sound like. So um, yeah, we have a bunch of them in our neighborhood. So if you take a snapshot of the market and you look at how, how fast those houses are gonna sell based on the current pace they're selling every single day, that would be six months, would be a normal market. During the pandemic, there was like a few weeks of inventory. Right now, there's like three months of inventory. And we're saying that's kind of normal now, but six months is really normal. So until we get back to six months, we don't have the, the amount of options that you really want. Houses are still selling pretty fast here. If a house is selling in 30 days, it's pretty fast. So you gotta think about all these factors. If you're gonna come and, and look to buy a house, like let's start that search a little bit early so we can get really dialed in and, and super focused on what you're looking for. And we can, we can solve that puzzle. We love solving that puzzle. That's our job. So please reach out, we'd love to help you. Okay, number 10, this is kind of sparked by a call I had yesterday with somebody moving here from Fort Lauderdale. People from South Florida are moving up here because it's a little bit more affordable. They're getting priced out of their own market. These cranes are just like chatting back and forth. I'm trying to do something here. <laughs> I don't know what's going on over there. They're sandhill cranes, they're big. Uh, they're like literally like this tall. So people are getting priced out of South Florida, Fort Lauderdale. She's thinking, okay, I can't spend 1.2 million, but I can spend 600,000. So I know if I go to Tampa, I can do that. She was just in town for a few days. We're showing her around, giving her some, some suggestions of places to explore. And then she's gonna decide if it's the right spot for her. But that's kind of an interesting trend. People moving from Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Naples. Like we've seen a lot of those moving up here lately and we're super excited to help them. They understand like what the culture's like. They understand what the market's like and they're super fun to work with. So if you're in South Florida and you're thinking about moving to Tampa, give us a call. But no matter where you are, if this video has added value to you, which I hope it has, give us a call, text or email. Let us hop on a Zoom call and see how we can best help you make your move to Tampa. Whether you're moving tomorrow or whether you're moving in two years, we would love a chance to connect you to our team and, and just process your move and see how we can help. As always, thanks for coming by.